Hello everybody. We're going to talk about watersheds today. It's a, a word you may have heard, but you might not have known what it is. And we're going to use the Carmel River as an example. A watershed is the area of land that catches rain and drains it into a stream or a river. So in this map, you can see the big, the big blue is the Carmel River and the smaller blue lines are all of the tributaries. And they're all included in an area that is surrounded by mountains. That is what the black line represents. So when the rain falls, anything from the top of the mountains that falls there and inside the watershed area runs downhill to the lowest point, which is each creek. And each creek is flowing and joining the Carmel River. So today we are starting off here next to the river, quite close to the ocean. The Carmel River is a 36 mile long river that originates in the Santa Lucia Mountains. It flows northwest through Carmel Valley with its mouth south of Carmel Bay. It drains a watershed of about 255 square miles. The river flows through various habitats beyond bankside riparian zones, starting in mixed evergreen forests and woodlands. It goes through remnant coastal sage and chaparral, coastal prairie, and coastal sand dunes at its Pacific mouth. Potrero Creek is the closest tributary to the Carmel River mouth. And we're going to be going next up Potrero Canyon. You can see it is not very far. It's a very small watershed to see Potrero Creek and learn about what is special there. So here we are standing actually over Potrero Creek and happily it is still flowing because we're in a very small watershed. If we were to continue walking upstream, we would come to a little clearing um, of grass surrounded by mountains. All the rainfall that falls either on the tops of those mountains or inside runs downhill. This is like we're standing in the bottom of a bowl. We're at the lowest place because the creek is here. Water flows to the lowest place. Every stream is the product of its watershed. A stream is made up of water that flows into it from the land above it. This is also called runoff. So we call this a riparian area. That means wet feet. The plants that are here are here because it's cool and wet. A riparian zone is the area of land with trees and other plants next to a stream that experiences regular flooding. The trees and plants are very important. They help clean water from runoff by filtering eroded soil and excess nutrients. During floods, they slow the flow of the water, which reduces erosion and filters soil that has washed into the stream. The roots also hold stream banks together. Leaves and other plant parts that fall become a very important part of the stream's food web. Okay, we're standing on the bridge. The creek is underneath my feet, and we're in a perfect place to look at riparian vegetation, where the plants grow that need water year-round. This giant sycamore tree is just growing its brand new leaves. We come down, we're going to see some more riparian plants. Walking along here, we have beautiful ferns. This is a very ancient plant that evolved back when the whole earth was very wet and they only grow where it's shady and cool. Plants that live in our riparian habitats have amazing adaptations for both collecting and storing water. And we'll take the redwood as an example. The redwoods have needles and each one of these needles is shaped like a little trough for collecting moisture in the air be it rain or fog, the water drips down the tree and even the branches swoop down so the water falls down at the base of the tree. Once on the ground, some of the water goes down into the soil and is used by plants. The leaves of plants release this water back into the air as water vapor. 
This process is called transpiration. The water vapor rises in the air and cools, forming clouds, and the water cycle is complete and starts all over again. There is an edge effect. There is sun at the border of waterways and forests. There's many layers. Ground plants, shrubs, small trees, large trees. So there's so many niches for insects and birds. 50% of all California birds nest in the riparian forest. Migratory birds follow waterways. 25% of all California land mammals live in riparian habitats. The riparian woodland has the highest diversity of all California plant communities. Here we are on the bridge. Let's just take a little view of what we see in all sides of us. Here is our creek, which in the fall is dry. Right now that water is trickling, heading towards the Carmel River and then on to the ocean. Here's looking back at where we came from. There's the fairy circle down there in the darkness down the trail, the darkness of the redwoods. Then we look upstream at our creek. Here's our creek coming from the hills, the mountains of the Santa Lucia Mountains, trickling down from the mountains. And then we continue around 